This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. This is Tiny at Obsessive Tiny on Twitter. And this is Mike White, and you can find me at I am Mike White. And this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the Obsessive Viewer Podcast. How is everyone doing? How are you guys doing? Stupendous. I'm so good. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Great. It's been a good week. It's That's been a good month so far for movies. Oh, yeah? For... Oh, man. For it, for the my February movie list uh, is, I got to say, I'm impressed with myself. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Nice. I think last year I watched... Maybe nine movies the entire month. Jeez. And uh, already in February, I th- I think I'm up to 18. Huh. Not too shabby. Not bad at all. I I don't know. I don't want to know where I'm at. I've I've yeah, had a confirmed 18. Nice. Cool. Including two viewings of E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Oh, two viewings. Two yeah, viewings. Baby. Interesting. Yeah, baby. Huh. Very interesting. I've good. had just no time to watch anything i've had just i've been busy um yeah but you know i'll get better yeah Mm -hmm. um so anyway so so this week is a special episode of the obsessive viewer podcast in which unless you guys i'm sure everyone listening to this knows this Sunday is the oscars the academy awards 86th annual annual academy awards i believe Yay! Mm -hmm. And in honor of that, what we've done here at the Obsessive Viewer at the Obsessive Viewer is we've gotten together with seven other shows to give you a rundown of all the nominees and our thoughts on the the movies nominated, the people nominated, and you know just a general a general pre Oscar show rundown, pretty much. Um, so I'm very happy to have all these shows on here. They're a bunch of great guys and ladies, I think. Are any women on this? So yeah. sexist. So sexist, man. <laughs> it's not sexism if it's true. Mm. Um, no, there is one woman on there, I think. Anyway. Pat Coon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he would have done the same. Yeah, he would have. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Our friend Pat from the Nerds you're looking for. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So we have we have just a bunch of clips for you guys uh, as we run down the list of nominees. Um, so before we get started, I- anything 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 on your guys' minds that uh, we should talk about before we get started? Yeah, I guess I'll say before we start just how interesting this Oscar race really is. Mm-hmm. Um, so so many of the categories are, are really super tight, and, and you know anything you read on the internet right now says um, the best picture race in particular is incredibly tight. And I'll save that for when we talk about it. But right. I'm I'm really excited. There there is no clear front runner in a lot of the categories, and I'm excited to see how they turn out. for For the first time in a while, I'm actually excited to see the turnout. Nice. Nice. Cool, me too. Yeah, same here. I unfortunately I haven't been able to watch a, a lot of the nominees uh, as much as, as many of the nominees as I, I as I uh, hope to, but it's very clear. I mean, it's a very competitive year for all of the no, all the categories. It seems. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing seeing what happens as well, and to retroactively go back and see all of the performances and all of the. <laughs> all the work done by all the nominated people and, and titles. Um, so, yeah. Good Sounds deal. Good. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, oh, also, uh, Tiny has launched his Secular Perspective podcast. You can find it at thesecularperspective.com and on iTunes. Just wanted to give a shout out for you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> no problem. Um, all right. So, should we just go right into it? Let's do it. I all think right. so. Awesome. Well, the first category that we have is. Me dropping my Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on product one placement, second. guys. Yes. Literally po- product placement. So the first category that we have for you guys today is best documentary 
feature film. I mean, we're going to, I mean, they also have short, short uh, subjects and all that, but I think we're just going to hit like the big ones. Okay. So best documentary features. The nominees are the act of killing cutie in the box boxer, dirty wars, the square and 20 feet from stardom. So, Tiny, I know that you've watched a lot of these. Mike, have you? How, how many have you watched any of them? I, I have not watched any of them. No. Okay. I'm, I'm a, unfortunately going to have to sit this round out. <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen any of them either. But Tiny, do you want to share your thoughts on the best documentary feature film category? Gladly, gladly. Uh, I've seen three out of the five. I've seen The Act of Killing, Dirty Wars, and The Square. Uh, all three of those are on Netflix Instant, by the way. That's how I watched them. Uh, Cutie and the Boxer is also on there. I haven't gotten around to that one yet. Uh, I honestly don't know which one of these to pick. Um, I know what 20 Feet from Stardom is about as well. It's about backup singers and stuff. Um, I, I think that one might might have a chance to win because it involves people who are semi-famous already. I don't know. I'm not sure which to pick. Um, I, I would go with The Act of Killing, which is just an absolutely heartbreaking, earth-shattering, disturbing film um it's about people who perpetrated a genocide essentially and going back and interviewing these people that have not suffered any consequences as a result of it it's, it's just really disturbing but but brilliant um dirty wars was a little bit dry uh and for, and for me i mean the information was incredible and i, I really appreciate uh, jeremy scale who's a journalist who made the film he's a really really interesting guy he does some incredible work um, and the score was really immersive. Um, I was impressed with it. I, I loved the, the the scale of it, the scope of it. it was really impressive. Um, if I had to choose personally, I would go with the act of killing. Um, but what I think will win, I just I honestly can't say. I I, I don't know. I'm probably going to go with uh, Dirty Wars. I don't know. I'm just trying to think like a Hollywood elitist sort of like <laughs> i don't know like what am i what's this cause that i want to promote so i'm going to vote for this i, I don't know i honestly can't say uh, i'm I'm just going to guess uh, dirty wars though cool yeah that's awesome. dirty wars it is so yeah that's great uh best documentary features that was that was a that's a good rundown thank you um yeah thanks the- <laughs> definitely uh kind of had to carry our weight there yeah so thanks my pleasure my pleasure uh the act of killing was a collaborative effort between like three filmmakers right one of them was uh, Werner herzog right uh he produced it yes i don't okay. know if he was directly involved with the filmmaking okay i know that yeah. the three of them did um the three the three men behind it i guess they did an ama on reddit and it looked pretty interesting mm. um but yeah I, I need to watch that i need to watch all of them yeah but awesome yep sweet thank uh, you should we move on to the next category <laughs> Let's do yes. it. All right. This is actually our first clip from the um, interwebs. Um, this clip comes to us from our friends at the Intermission podcast uh, put on by movieguys.org. Um, and they – I need to preface their clip because it's it's pretty funny. They – what they did was they hooked up – they hooked themselves up to a shock collar and I believe that one one of the hosts, Craig, his wife, uh, his wife was off off mic, basically controlling it and just randomly uh, shocking them. So uh, here is the intermission podcast uh, talking about best visual effects. Intermission. Up next, we have the best visual effects category, <laughs> and your nominees are Gravity, no, oh, oh, God. Shiver me too. The Hobbit, <laughs> The Desolation of, of Smug, Smaug, 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 Iron Man Three, the Third Iron Man, <laughs> the, the Lone Ranger, the, and the only Ranger, and Star Trek Into the Dark. No, out of the and, line. And no, that's it, guy. No, and there's another and on there. No, we're not. Man of Steel. <laughs> Ninja Turtles. How no. did Man of Steel not get on You're there? You're telling me Ninja Turtles ain't one of them? Neither no. one of those. <laughs> Guy, Ninja Turtles weren't 
didn't even happen this year. Yeah. Well, Man of Steel. And Man of Steel was terrible. Technically, Ninja no. Turtles did happen this year because it, <laughs> oh, no, no. it wasn't that bad. No, that one got me. <laughs> oh, I think Ninja Turtles got screwed. Um, Man of Steel got screwed. You're correct there. It should, it should be on there before Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll agree with you. Yeah. I, I, General Zod. Were a uh, unitard the entire time. Oh, yeah. All CG. We saw it there on the screen. Oh, so they they're good at using a computer then. That's yeah, what visual effects good is good enough Craig. to win an award for one guy. And then you've got a movie like Gravity on there that used it for the whole freaking movie. Hey, I oh. didn't see Sandra Bullock flying through skyscrapers. She, she wore she a did, skin tight suit the whole time. She did float in a spaceship and she float well. That's true. I won't argue with Gravity, <laughs> but he should be there before Lone Ranger. <laughs> Well, yeah, Lone Ranger. You can't a, argue yeah. with gravity. Actually, it's the law. I'm, Iron Man's better than Lone Gravity, <laughs> so Superman should be on there before Lone Gravity. Iron Man's better. Than Did you just say Lone Gravity? Did I say I know. Yeah. Lone Ranger should not be on the list. It Shock him. Superman and Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. okay. The Even Hobbit. His cape was CG. Oh, <laughs> just drop it. Not yeah. the whole time, but a lot of times. Okay, for me. No, Lone Ranger shouldn't be there. Uh, I don't understand why he is there. Yeah. What about um, Pacific Rim? I didn't. I mean, special or it, it should have beat Lone Ranger. Yeah, yeah. I'd put yeah. Lone Ranger also. Yeah. It should come in second behind Man of Steel. <sighs> <sighs> I'm still going with Star Trek. No, because it visually wowed me. It was. It was really good. Visual it was back. visually exactly like the first Star Trek. Yeah. Did it the did. first Star Trek win an Oscar? Because it should have. I, I don't it. think it did. Probably not. I think it should be this, this is their comeback The here. Hobbit or Gravity. Gra- Gra- Gravity is the clear winner in this category. Okay, I haven't seen it, The Hobbit, but listen, you guys complain about his feet. Why would it ever win the best visual effects I didn't category? Complain about his feet. He had the floppy feet. And there was totally a shot in the movie from a GoPro camera. What's wrong with that? Those are high gonna, tech cameras. How are you going to throw that in there? <laughs> I don't know. It's a $300 camera. <laughs> Wait, what camera? GoPros. Why was that in The Hobbit? They used one. Yeah, but... When they're in the barrels. That was pointless. Instead of using a 4K camera, they used that little GoPro piece of crap. I think they should have... Exactly. Exactly. It was careless. It shouldn't be in the visual that, effects category. Yeah, guess, that filming I, style didn't really fit in well with the rest of the film. So right, that's I, a, made, I made my decision. I go with gravity. Because right, you're right. Because yeah. it really made you think they were actually in space the whole movie. Nah, I'm going to go with Man of Steel. Okay, so it comes down to... <laughs> it's just not on the list. It's on my list. Gravity and Star Trek. <laughs> and I think we've all clearly decided... It's gravity. Star Trek's the winner. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Simmer, ooh, simmer down now. She did not like Mother that. Maybe she did not like the answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> you, guys, uh. you guys are getting too tense, guys. You guys need to lighten no, up. No, that was... You're getting all tense-faced. So anyway, <laughs> I guess from the intermission podcast, I guess I'll flop over to the uh, majority. Yep. We'll say that gravity... Is going to sweep the category. Yeah, it's going to be right behind. Yeah. Go, Sandra. It's your birthday. Get <laughs> I like Sandra Bullock. <laughs> so, you know, congratulations, Gravity and Sandra Bullock. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that movie I feel like was awesome. That's five. No. Oh, I feel like you guys just wanted to win because of Sandra Bullock. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, yeah. That's not me. Awesome. The award's not for her. It's for the movie. Hey. She gets the Oscar. She was cute. Does she, or does the special effects team get it? They'll give it to her. She's Sandra Bullock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe next year the Ninja Turtles will win. Yeah, you better believe it. And that was Intermission Podcast with their uh, <laughs> rundown of the best visual effects while strapped to a shock collar. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks, we need guys. to implement that. <laughs> uh, it's all you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, that was that was the best for the visual effects. You guys have any comments on that category or anything? Uh, I think they got it right with gravity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably gravity. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I I agree. Gravity, that was just, it was stunning to watch. So, (laughs) I mean, I watched it like three times. So, yeah. Um, All right. Should we move on to the next category? Yes. All right. By the way, you can find intermission podcasts at movieguys.org. All right. So the next category is, I just pretty much put these together. It's uh, best sound editing and sound mixing 
Uh, they're two separate categories. Uh, sound editing is uh, All is Lost, Captain Phillips, Gravity, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog, and Lone Survivor. And then sound mixing is Captain Phillips, Gravity, The Hobbit, Desolation of Smog, uh, Inside Lu- Lewin Davis, and Lone Survivor. So what do you guys think of these categories? Um, like you said, kind of a good, 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 um, categories to combine together. Kind yeah. of, um, I'm going to go with, uh, the Hobbit on both counts. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it that way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> huh. It's weird. <clears throat> it's weird to see, um, some different choices on there. The, the sound mixing and the sound editing, I, I know that they're different things. The mixing is the, the levels and how well it comes together. And the editing is um, like how they present it to you as far as the scenes are concerned. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, the winner of one usually wins the other. My choices, I'm actually going to split them because there's only, only one option of each in each um, for sound mixing, I'm going to go with Inside Lewin Davis because they they recorded live all of the songs from Lewin Davis. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah, and then um, and then I think recorded again over those, like multiple takes, and then acted over those. Um, and it's great. It sounds like you're in the club listening to them. It's fantastic. Nice. And then I'm going to go as far as uh, sound editing. I'm going to go with All Is Lost. <clears throat> Um, because it it focused so much on sound because there was no dialogue in it. Uh, I don't think either of those movies will win, but I think those are my those are my picks. Awesome, very, very nice. good. Thanks. Um, as a fanboy for this movie, I'm gonna go with Gravity because the sound was so integral to the story being presented and and the, and the way that the the scenes played out it was just so very much. It was a very sound heavy movie for me. Um, and it played to the atmosphere, <laughs> no pun intended, um, <laughs> extremely well. So I think I'm going to pick those, but I want to comment that, uh, Lone Survivor is, is nominated for both of those. And it's funny to me that this movie was, it, it had a lot of Oscar hype around it. And we've talked about our, our thoughts for on Lone Survivor, um, before, and I had some particularly, um, choice words about that movie, but, I just thought it was interesting that these two these two categories are the ones that it actually got nominated for after having such um, so so much hype surrounding it. Um, even still, I wouldn't give them the, give it the give it the statue for those. I, I'd go with Gravity all the way. Cool. Yep. Right. Cool. Uh, should we proceed? Yes. Uh, yep. Let's all right. keep going now. The this is this is another another instance where I've where I've put together two two uh, two nominees uh, two categories uh, best original song and best original score. Here are the nominations for uh, or the nominees for original song: Happy music and lyrics by Pharrell Williams for Despicable Me Two, Let It Go music and lyrics by Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez for Frozen, The Moon Song music by Karen O, lyrics by Karen O and Spike Jones for Her. And Ordinary Love, music by Paul Hewson, Dave Evans, Adam Clayton, Larry Mullen, lyrics by Paul Hewson for Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom. Yeah, what do you guys think of this category? I don't know. I'm only familiar with Happy and Let It Go. Um, I'm kind of disappointed to not see any of the Lou and Davis songs on there. Mm-hmm. However, most of those are covers. I okay. guess so. You can't really call it an original song, so never mind. <laughs> um, I think "Let It Go" is the clear favorite. I mean, people raved about "Frozen," and that yeah. one's going to win. But yeah. uh, everything is awesome from the Lego Movie. Well, I guess Lego <laughs> Movie came out 2014. Yeah. So yeah, "Let It Go." Nice. Okay. okay. Well, the only one I've seen is uh, from the movie "Her," the Moon Song, and uh, I just haven't seen the other one, so I, I can't really comment, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> But I also I love the Moon Song, so I'm kind of pulling for that uh, blindly, I guess. It was good, yeah. Yeah. Um, and best original score. Uh, do you want me to read them, guys? Yeah, go sure. ahead. Okay, best original score: John Williams for The Book Thief, Stephen Price for Gravity, uh, William Butler and Owen Pallet for Her, 
uh, Alex, Alexan, uh, wow, Alexander Alexandra Desplat. Desplat for Philomena and Thomas Newman for Saving Mr. Banks. Um, before we get into our like choices for this or whatever, I have a bone to pick with this category. Pick it. I think that 12 Years a Slave was robbed for this. I know it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's it's funny to say that because it's got it swept the nominations. Mm-hmm. But one of the biggest parts of that movie for me that really that really affected me was the score. It it felt like there was there were clear instances in the movie where uh, uh Solomon was in uh, there, there were parts in the score where it kind of gr- ground into this really mechanical, almost like electronic kind of music uh, thing. That it, and it kind of felt like it was it was their signal to us that Solomon is in this in the machinations of slavery, and it kind of felt like restricting. Uh, for me as a viewer, it felt restrict. It felt like I was restrictive, restricted slightly in like my my senses a little bit. It kind of felt a little unnerving to me, and it really f- helped uh, again with that with the atmosphere of that. Um, so I felt like that that should have been nominated and that should have been recognized for it because it was a very big part of the viewing experience for me. Mm-hmm. Wow, uh, good analysis, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, again, I love Gravity, but I also really like the music in her. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go with her. Yeah, um, I might have to do that too. Gravity, Gravity as a movie kind of lent itself to that really orchestral type of big score type of thing. So much so that they, you know, they ripped the uh, the sunshine theme <laughs> for the trailers. They did, <laughs> which of course is not in in the movie. Right, right. But uh, her, I think was if it's original score i think her was more of an original work that was kind of um custom fitted to the movie okay yeah i agree cool tiny how about you um i don't have a clear pick either i'm gonna lean towards the movie her as well um i did see saving mr banks uh but i don't recall the music very much uh, unfortunately um i'm gonna lean towards her yeah Cool. Uh, cool. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Well, this next category is best makeup and hairstyling. Uh, we actually have a clip from uh, Poor Man's Process uh, podcast, uh, which I will play right now. Hey there, it's your friends from Poor Man's Process, the Superliminal Films podcast found at www.superliminalfilms.com. And we're going to be bringing you a rundown of the best makeup and hairstyling category at this year's Academy Awards. Jared. Care to list us off who was nominated? All right, well, uh, for Dallas Buyers Club, Audretha Lee and Robin Matthews. For Jackass Presents, Bad Grandpa, uh, Stephen Prouty. And for The Lone Ranger, Joel Harlow and Gloria Pasqua. All right, that's about going to be what you hear out of me, Dan, and J-Rod, because uh, Max and Paul, who are makeup artists by trade, are going to take over and tell us why these films are going to win. <laughs> I'm laughing at me, Dan and J Rod. It was they me, don't know you, Dan. so they don't know me, myself, Dan. Is there a better way to phrase that? Uh, I mean, myself might have been better, but I was just trying to get out of the way fast so you could talk about makeup. Yeah, that's fair. That but it just made me. And then I looked at this guy, and I was done. Well, looking at Paul is yeah, this guy's bad. just yucking it up. He's a coconut. So who's gonna win? Um, well, all of these makeups obviously are astounding because they're nominated pieces. Um, so no, no political nominations in this category. No, unfortunately, I guess. <laughs> But, yeah, Jared Leto's makeup all throughout. Dallas Buyers Club is insane, even down to, like, the deteriorated deathbed look is crazy. Matthew McConaughey, granted, he contributed a huge part of it himself. Lost, like, 40 pounds. I know, but there's still that makeup to make his cheekbones look more pointed, and, like, those prosthesis, and, you know what I mean, that little bit of work that was done just made him look horrendous. Um, uh, Bad Grandpa, I still... I'm blown away that that is like, I mean, granted, again, the makeups look fantastic and it's looked fantastic this whole time. It just seems like, I mean, maybe they were a little light this year. It just seems like I, I have such a hard time believing that the Academy is going to, you know what I mean, hand a statue to Jackass. Yeah, but like the pictures, the stills, because like, I haven't seen it, but the stills of him when he's completely topless wearing that old man prosthesis on his torso – his man breasts look like man breasts. It's crazy. And so the thing are. about that makeup <laughs> is that it looks real to people in real life, not just on camera. 
That's huge. Yeah. That's yeah. If you can deal. fool people in real life, I think you're you're doing a lot better than if you are just fooling people on camera. Because the key to prosthesis is really two key things to prosthesis. Just to run through it really quick in kind of layman's terms, one is the paint job obviously, and two is the seams and the edges of the piece because somewhere there has to meet the fake part and the real skin, and there you have to kind of seamlessly integrate it over. Like the ideal would be you can run your finger over it and you really wouldn't feel a difference as far as like you wouldn't hit a bump or like you wouldn't start to peel up any part of it, and getting those seam lines down flawlessly like that is is insane. And uh, then you have the last one, Lone Ranger. Um, that's a, a mix uh, because you have the practical stuff that uh, Johnny Depp wore just the actual like face painting aspect of it mixed with the old age stuff that they did for it as well, which also looks really good. The old Tonto is scary. Yeah, so, I mean, it's really hard to say what they like. I mean, they really like, I mean, Dick Smith said, realistic uh, human makeup is the toughest one you're going to do. And he's absolutely right because we all know what people look like because we see them since, you know what I mean, since we're, you know, birth, we interact with people so we know what they look like. What does an alien from planet XYZ look like? We don't know because, you know what I mean, we've never seen an alien from planet XYZ. So I'll buy whatever you tell me planet alien XYZ thing looks like. Good point. So now to put everybody in the spot. Paul, who's winning? I think it'll be Lone Ranger. Jared? I really think Jack has a shot. Max? I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to say Lone Ranger. I think second place would be uh, Dallas Buyers Club. Still going to say Bad Grandpa, and I think it would go to after that Dallas Buyers Club for the subject matter. That was makeup and hairstyling. We're the crew of Poor Man's Process. Have a good Oscars. All right. Thank you guys from Poor Man's Process for that awesome rundown on the best makeup and hairstyling category. Uh, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. It was pretty insightful uh, and interesting what they said about Bad Grandpa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't really think about it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, in fa- if I were giving out the award, I would probably give it to Jackass. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've only I, – well, I mean, I only have the trailers to, to, <laughs> to guide me on these because I haven't seen the movies. But, you know, it, it is really impressive. And it kind of seems like kind of like, oh, Jackass is going to get a, get an Oscar. But it's like – it's more like Jackass looks like they're going to earn an Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Um, um I, and I and I think while the makeup was pretty good in Dallas Buyers Club, I think what sold it was the performance. I don't know that mm. the makeup was all that impressive. Yeah, I agree. Interesting. So, cool. Yep. All right. Well, uh this next category is another one that I this may not be fair to um put them together but in the interest of time uh i went ahead and put these two together it's uh best costume design and best production design um oh. <laughs> okay for uh uh for best costume design there's american hustle uh the grand master the great gatsby the invisible woman and 12 years a slave um and then for best production design there's american hustle gravity the Great Gatsby, Her, and Twelve Years a Slave. So, what do you guys think about these two categories? I'll say um, costume. I I hate to give any credit to the movie The Great Gatsby, but it was one of the good things about it. Uh, maybe the only. Um, I, I honestly, I think I'd probably go with Gatsby for that. I, I was that was a nice aspect of that film. American Hustle was also good for that. Um, wasn't crazy about that movie either, but uh, and uh, Twelve Years a Slave. I just I've spoken about this. I haven't. I just could not pay attention to the production side of that movie because I was so entranced by the story. I honestly can't. Uh, it's not that I can't picture it. It's just that I didn't. I just didn't analyze it as I was watching it. So, and then I haven't seen the other two. So I'm gonna go with Gatsby for costume. Nice, Mike. How about you? <laughs> for costume, I'm gonna go with American Hustle. It's uh, it's. Uh, I think it it it's most evocative of the era from which it comes, mm-hmm. um, and c- kind of what you said. It's it's like the best thing about that movie, yeah. you know, costume design <laughs> and costume design. Um, well, no, I guess it does, hairstyling would include um, Christian Bale's hair. So I don't, I don't know. American Hustle for costume design for production design. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go with Great Gaps, Great Gatsby. Now we're not talking about what the better movie was. I I hated Great Gatsby about as much as you as much as you did, Tiny. But mm-hmm. uh, 
those those set pieces were gorgeous. I mean, it was it looked pretty great visually. So I'm mm. gonna go with Gatsby on the production design. See, I didn't think they were they were impressive, but I didn't think they were gorgeous. I, I thought it was as far as if you're looking at production in total, I, I just didn't I didn't care for that aspect of it. Um, not to say you're wrong, it's just personal opinion and stuff. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm actually, I think I'm going to go with um, her on this because so, you know, it's a futuristic in, entirely, well, not entirely, but such a, you know, a, a fabricated world. And uh, there was very little to no CGI in the movie, um, at least as far as production goes. Um, I think it was pretty impressive. Um, it's hard for me to not pick 12 Years a Slave, but uh, that would probably be my backup. <laughs> so that's what I'll say. Her. Nice. Cool. Um yeah, as far as costume design, I I don't know. I haven't seen American Hustle, but I feel like a lot of what I have seen of it has been very costume oriented. Um mm-hmm. those they had the promotional materials that had each character kind of you saw like their their their, uh, their aesthetic, I guess, and uh it was very clear that it was a lot of a lot of work was done there. Um so my gut says that that'll that'll get it. Um, I want 12 years a slave to get it just because uh, I love that movie so much. Um, and it was, I think in, in a past episode, I think tiny, when you were talking about it, I think you mentioned that you were transported to, to 18, uh, the 18 hundreds. And mm-hmm. I felt that way too. And a lot was that, a lot of that was to, uh, to, to the, uh, due to the, due to the costume design. Cool. Um, as far as production design, now, <laughs> after saying that about Twelve Years a Slave, I have to I have to bucket and go to her because this is this is a tough category for me because I love Gravity. I thought Gravity the production design was just incredible. Um, the film the the filmmaking and everything was 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 really really on point for that. And the production design of like the I mean the digital. I don't know. The production design was great, but the way that you talked about her tiny makes me kind of side with that because it was, it was really impressive the way that Spike Jones and, and company, how they created this futuristic sci-fi world, but still kept it grounded in reality to the point where you almost, it's not like when, when you see, when you see walking Phoenix walking down the street and you see the, the skyscrapers and stuff like that and the futuristic stuff in the background, you kind of, you don't think, Oh, when is this? You think, Oh, Hey, what city is this? Um, because you don't think, you don't think of it in terms of, Oh, this is a futuristic movie and all that. It kind of transports you into this, this, this kind of mindset where you have this, uh, this thought process where, where you're just like, Oh, okay. I'm accepting that this is the future and I'm accepting that this is our future even. So now I just want to know where exactly is he and what, what exactly is going on. Um, and I think that that's something that's really hard to do with a movie like that. And, and something that it could have easily lost focus, uh, or caused the audience to lose focus over it, but it was incorporated very well. Um, well said. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. So I th- yeah. think I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go with her. I think. Nice. Uh, yeah. So moving on, we have best editing. Uh, we have American Hustle, uh, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, uh, Gravity, and Twelve Years a Slave. Uh, what do you guys think of best editing? Um, for this category, I, let me say right off the bat, I think uh, the film The Fifth Estate should have been nominated for this. That was a really tight movie. I think it got snubbed and probably two categories in in the Oscars this year. I'll say that to begin with. Um, This is a tough category, in my opinion. I think film editing is an incredible skill. I think it's it's become so prevalent in in modern filmmaking, how well editing is done. Um, American Hustle could have used a lot of editing, blatantly. Um, Captain Phillips could have been a little bit tighter as well, in my opinion. Um, Dallas Buyers Club was really well edited, really well put together. Uh, gravity as well um but i think i gotta go with 12 years a slave um i've admitted my bias towards this film i think it's one of the best movies ever made easily um and i think part of that was keeping it a tight concise story they didn't let parts drag the parts that were sort of long were intentionally long and the parts that were short were intentionally short 
as as a way to ebb and flow the ups and downs of the story. Um, I think it was beautifully crafted as far as editing goes. Um, I, I just I loved it. We felt we felt the passage of time. You know, you could you could feel it as opposed to seeing it. Um, so that's why I, I would go Twelve Years a Slave. Nice. Uh, yep, Mike. How about you? Um, I'm surprised to hear you say Twelve Years a Slave. I guess maybe not because you love that movie so much. Mm-hmm. I think Gravity is is the clear front runner here. I think hmm. Gravity is 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 the clear favorite, and uh, and it, I think it's the better work. Uh, as far as as far as visually piecing a movie together, I think what's so great about it is the restraint shown in some of those long, long, long shots. That's really hard to do when you when you have a movie with uh, two characters and really one character after the first thirty minutes uh, with really long shots. That's a that's a tough movie to make to keep people interested. Uh, and Gravity mm-hmm. did it so well. Not to take anything away from 12 Years a Slave, I agree with just about everything you said, except that I think Gravity did it better. Interesting. I have to... <laughs> I don't know. I have to play... I, I have to kind of split the split the difference on here. It's all right. Do it. I <laughs> I can't choose between the two. I, I Those are the only two that I've seen of the of them. Um, both, both movies, their editing really played well to the immersiveness of of the movie um gravity you from the moment that you uh are see that view of the earth you're just immersed in it and the the editing there's no hiccups there's no Mm -hmm. the the visual story the visual story being presented is cut together in a way that is incredibly immersive um and with 12 years a slave same thing uh it's just from the second that i see from the second that i saw Solomon doing like like working in the fields it was very clear to me that this was this was going to be a heartbreaking movie and it was going to be just a movie that really just commanded my emotional um my emotional my, uh, my emotions pretty much um so I might have to give the edge to 12 years a slave honestly um because nice. thank you cuz the way that it's pieced together in such a way that like tiny said, you really feel the passage of time and it's, uh, and it's something that's just really well, well, well put together. And it's something that you don't, you're on this journey with him and it's, uh, and the editing really, really guides you along that, that journey, I think. Uh, so even though I love gravity with all of my heart, um, I'll have to go with 12 years of slave, which had the more, um, emotional ties to me so, a boy thank Atta you boy <laughs> all right whatever, <laughs> whatever. uh all right mike, um, mike you're I'll, not wrong yeah i, I know and you and you guys are it's 12 years a slave is a great movie mm-hmm. um and what i might be missing in 12 years a slave is that the editing was so seamless and well done that it didn't stick out to me gravity mm-hmm. just seemed like the harder movie to edit mm-hmm. thus more of a uh success M- m- more of a more of a thing to behold because it's like okay. wow they they totally pulled that off. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. Um, next category is best cinematography. Um, this we have uh, the Grandmaster, uh, Gravity, Inside Lewin Davis, Nebraska, and Prisoners. Um, what do you guys think of best cinematography? Let me say, I would take a lot of what you guys said for film editing and apply it to 12 Years a Slave for cinematography. Interesting that it's not nominated. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Clearly, clearly gravity, my pick for, for all the same reasons. I mean, it's, it's a, um, I said before on this podcast, I'm worried about how it'll play at home. Of course, it, it just came out on DVD on Tuesday. Um, I haven't had a chance to watch it. When, at the time of this recording, I can't wait to see it again. But in the theaters, it it was a marvel. It was it was a cinematic achievement like we've never seen before. If if it doesn't win cinematography, I don't know what the cinematography category is for. <laughs> right. Um. I interestingly, I I completely disagree with you because um I, I wanted to say this about editing as well. I feel like the cinematography was non-existent in the film because everything that was encapsulated by cinematography was entirely digitally created. Um, you're dealing with a created environment. It's not, it's not capturing 
it's it's something that was built on a computer, not something that was captured on a camera. So I don't think it, I, I don't honestly don't know how it qualifies even. Um, obviously, not every frame in the movie is digitally created, but um, like with the editing, like what they had to, all they had to edit in, in a lot of those long takes that you mentioned were just two people's faces, and that's it. So that's why I don't pick Gravity for either of these categories. Um, but I, I appreciate your passion though, because I I love the movie too, and I think it was visually incredible. Uh, it blew me away. Um, mm-hmm. I love the movie. I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from it. I'm just saying for these categories, I think there was better artistry in other in other films. Um, for this category, though, cinematography, the only two that I've seen are Gravity and Prisoners. Um, so, ironically, I have to go with Gravity because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Prisoners, uh, I don't think it's, it's, uh, its artistry was really was really demonstrated through the cinematography. Um, really? Although that was a, a beautiful film as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Gravity, but it's just because I haven't seen the others, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, as far as your criticisms of, of cinematography and Gravity, I think that there's, um, I, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot to be said about, about the cinematography and Gravity. I feel like, I mean, the lighting... I think so. And, I think this is a long conversation about what is cinematography. Yeah. Yeah, true. And I wonder if voters are given a handbook. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I just feel like they, they had... I don't, I don't know. There was a lot to work with there. I mean, they had to create this framework to, to, for it to exist. And I mean, it's not like, it's not like they had to create something from scratch. I mean, they had to create like an actual, like something that's, that's real, like that, that felt real. Uh, this view of, of this, this, uh, all this awesome, uh, by the literal definition of the term, awesome view of, of earth and space. Um, and they had to get the right, the lighting right, and they had to they had to incorporate a lot of a lot of um, a lot of factors into that. So I think I don't know. I think gravity is, I think gravity will get it because um, because it's it's perfect. I don't necessarily know what Nebraska is doing on this list. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean it's it's a great movie. I love the movie. We'll talk more about it when we get to best pictures. But I mean, I mean put put a different movie in its place. <laughs> 12 Years a Slave. We'll yeah. There, yeah. 12 Years a Slave should be there. I yeah. think we just have def- different definitions of what cinematography is. That's all. I think so okay. too. Yeah. yeah. Not that either of us are right or wrong. Right, I think right. it's, that's what's great about this stuff is you can interpret it to, to yeah. your own, you know, your own way. Exactly. Um, so, will, so Matt, your pick, just to be clear. My pick is Gravity, although I will say just really quickly that I'm happy to see Prisoners on there. I think that it was a very... Fincher esque, yeah, movie, and I mean yeah. maybe that's maybe that's akin to being derivative or anything, but it it felt really grimy and really glossy at the same time, and I think that that's a hard, hard uh, uh, dichotomy to strike, I guess. Um, cool, very well said. So yeah, thank you. And I wish that I I, I loved Prisoners, and I kind of wish that it would have gotten more love throughout the rest of the nomin- of th- uh, the rest of the categories. Me too. Yeah. Um, having said that, moving on to our next category is uh, we're gonna we're gonna skip over uh, foreign language because I don't have have any of you seen the the foreign language mo- mo- nominees. None of nope. them. Nope. Yeah. Xenophobia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't I haven't seen him either. Um, I will eventually, but I just haven't seen him. So uh, we'll leave that to people who are more knowledgeable about it. Um, but we'll leapfrog over that and go to best animated feature film. Now this category, uh, we have a clip from our friends at the nerd you're looking for podcast. And I will go ahead and play that now. Animated feature film. Oh my god. Okay. I got something to say here. Animated feature film. Here are the nominees. The Crudes, Despicable Me 2, Ernest and Celestine, and I might be pronouncing that wrong because I'm awful at that, um, Frozen, and The Wind Rises. Any glaring omissions to you, Pat? Uh, I would like to see Monsters University, but I'm happy no. that. Shit, where's Monsters <laughs> University? Oh my god. I, you're uh, telling me that you're telling me that the Crudes and Despicable Me Too 
were better than Monsters University. Oh, you watch your tongue. Despicable Me Too is awesome. Uh, that's definitely my favorite of the bunch. It was an enjoyable movie, but Monsters University, hands down. I wouldn't say hands down. It, it'd be tough hands for down. me. Uh, hands I, down. I guess if I'm going by uh, my favorite movie list that we talked about last episode, i got to go with Monsters University. But I really like Despicable Me Too. I, I really liked that movie a lot. No, I mean, it's a cute movie. It's fun, but... I think Monsters University had a lot more to say than fart guns. <laughs> but they were supposed to make dark guns. That's hilarious. <laughs> and, and that's what we're dealing with in, in, in the Academy, apparently. Thank you guys for uh, for that. Uh, the Nerds You're Looking For can be found at the thenerdspodcast.com. Um, yeah, uh, any, anything about I, – I agree wholeheartedly that yeah, – They bring Monsters, up a good point. Yeah, Monsters For University sure. should have been included on there. Agreed. Um, I could talk a lot about that, <laughs> um, especially after the other day having having seen The Crudes. That's uh, that's not a movie that should have been nominated over a Pixar movie. Um, yeah. I think Frozen's the clear favorite yeah. in terms of voters and everything I've read. So I think Same so here. too. So I mean, I haven't was, seen any of them. <laughs> I've seen I've seen the Crudes, Despicable Me and Despicable Me Two, and I mean, Despicable Me Two I liked, but Monsters University should be on there. I'll, I'll be happy when Frozen gets it to keep it in the in the Disney Pixar family because uh, it's a Disney movie. But I'm not pleased that uh, um, Pixar was overlooked. I've heard that The Wind Rises is really 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 good, um, and it may be people are saying it may be uh, Hayao Miyazaki's last movie. So that's right. So that uh, I'm curious. I'm I'm very intrigued to see that. All right. So. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, um, moving on. Our next uh, our next category is best adapted screenplay, which we have another uh, clip from the internet. This comes from uh, local Indianapolis um, uh, podcast, uh, Movie Buzzed, which I will have the honor of being on this weekend uh, during the Oscars. It's the the premise of the show is that they get they get buzzed and they and they watch a movie and they comment on it. So this is their uh, uh, analysis of the best adapted screenplay category. It's time for movie buzz. It is time for movie buzz. Tell your mom, your sister, and your cousin it's time for movie. Here comes your hook sack Carrying a six pack Come on over, enjoy the fun It's time for movie buzz Yeah, come on over, enjoy the fun It's time for movie buzz Hello, this is Zach from the Movie Buzz Podcast And I'm privileged to be here on the Obsessive Viewer Podcast pre-Oscar show uh, we'll be having our own movie buzzed one man Oscar party with call in guests like Matt from the Obsessive Viewer. So head on over to moviebuzzed.podomatic.com in the coming weeks to listen to me make a complete fool of myself. On to the nominees for the Oscar in the category Best Adapted Screenplay. For the first nominee, we have Before Midnight with screenwriters Richard Linklater, Julie Delpy, and Ethan Hawke. Secondly, Captain Phillips with screenwriter Billy Ray, not of the Cyruses, I presume. We also have <laughs> Philomena with screenwriters Steve Coogan and Jeff Pope. We also have 12 Years a Slave with screenwriter John Ridley. And finally, the last nominee in the category Best Adapted Screenplay is The Wolf of Wall Street with screenwriter Terrence Winter. Now, before I give my prediction for the uh, winner, I'd first like to extend my gratitude to the Obsessive Viewer podcast. You guys are super knowledgeable and absolutely a joy to listen to, especially for a movie fan like myself. I'd also like to thank the Chris Break Show podcast for getting us in contact with the Obsessive Viewer, which allowed us to do this segment. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the Academy, <laughs> my agent. Gosh, there's so many people. I just... Are you kidding me? You're going to come at me with the classical music Oscar stick and try and cut me off so that I can't give you my prediction for the winner of Best Adapted Screenplay? How rude is that? I mean, I, wasn't, I just came on here as a courtesy. Do you expect me to just go out?
<laughs> and that was uh, Movie Buzzed with their analysis of the best of the screen. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it was. I didn't know it was going to end there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys. Um, That's pretty good. Yeah, I love. It. I'm looking forward to being on. I've, I've been uh, texting te- texting Zach back and forth about it, and uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, um, it'll be fun. Uh, so, what do you guys think of, of best adapted screenplay? Uh, it's Twelve Years a Slave. Yeah, no. <laughs> same here. Same here. Um, <laughs> I'll say, uh, mad respect to Terrence Winter for The Wolf of Wall Street. It was very close. I read that book um, by uh, Jordan Belfort, and uh, the book was really good. It's interesting. It's funny, uh, disturbing. Um, but there were some there were some parts that was left out of the true story that I think would have served the film very well. Um, there's a whole part where he goes to rehab and he has surgery for his back that would have been just amazing to see Martin Scorsese capture. Um, so I feel like that movie was lacking a little bit. That's why I'd put it just below 12 years of slave. Okay. Yeah. Scorsese did that, did that movie wrong. Did Terrence Winter wrong. He, that could, that could have used some heavy editing and some, uh, some different decisions. I liked the movie a lot, Uh but, uh, it, it won't win adapted screenplay. Um, yeah. Or best picture because of Martin Scorsese, I think. Agreed. That's a shame. Um, as a fan of Boardwalk Empire, I'm just glad to see Terrence Winter get a nod because mm-hmm. um, he's a showrunner for that. But 12 Years a Slave for me. Cool. Um, the next category is best original screenplay, which uh, is presented to us from other the other, uh, another Indianapolis-based podcast, The Chris Break Show. Um, which <laughs> they do this. They, I, I always talk about this. It's hilarious to me. They do occasionally, they do a, a five minutes in Cape side segment where they basically cold read a scene from Dawson's Creek. And <laughs> it's, it's hilarious to me. I, I love every single time they do it. And they just recently did a, an, a thing where one of the, <laughs> one of them a tangent, I'm sorry. One of them called the salon in Wilmington, North Carolina, that was used as the filming location of the video rental place that <laughs> that uh, Dawson and Pacey worked at in Dawson's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> they called them throughout the day asking if their friend Pacey was there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's it's hysterical. You guys will have to check it out. It's I loved it. <laughs> but yeah, so here's uh, here's Chris Brake Show talking about best original screenplay. Hello there. It is a beautiful night in Indianapolis. And we are here as the Chris Break Show to discuss the category for Best Original Screenplay. <laughs> All right. My name is Chris Break. I'm sitting here with... Crabby Christine, who's looking crabbier than ever right now. Yo. <laughs> and Mr. John Rapp. Hello, hello. So I, I know I know who I want to win, or who I think, I predict is going to win. Uh, but let's, let's go ahead and go through these. Okay, and John, you got a little thing you prepared for the, uh, the, the reasons why and the reasons why not. Right. That you found. <clears throat> According to Empire Online, we're going to give you a pro and a con for each one of the five films that have been nominated for Best Original Screenplay. Why this one will win, and well, then why this our one, first one will not win. First one, American Hustle. Ah, <laughs> let me tell you about American Hustle. Yeah, what's that one about? Well, everybody built that f***ing thing up like it was going to be something. Right. And, I mean, it was a fun movie. Like, it was c- comparable to a superhero movie. You know, like I don't, I don't really think that's Oscar material. I'm kind of offended that it's nominated for Best Picture <laughs> and for Best Writing. I guess you could put it up there for Best Writing, but I think Harvey Weinstein's just jerking off every fucking person on the ballot. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was okay, Christine? What do you think? I thought it was a good movie, but I, I, I agree. It's, it's kind of overbuzzed. It's won so many other awards. I doubt it will win this one. That, that's pretty much why the Empire Online yeah. said why what it did, would win, or why, and what here's did, why it won't win. A raft of nominations, including BAFTA, Golden Globe, and Writers Guild, is no guarantee that it's going to win. Okay, next. That's all they said. Okay. Well, no, why, why won't it? Why won't it win? That, that's why it won't well, win. Come on. Uh, next would be <laughs> next is Blue Jasmine. No, what, what was the up? 
Oh, the, Why uh, will okay. it win? Pretty much what you guys said. The film is a front runner for the big prizes with nominations in all four acting categories. Uh, best picture, director, and the rest. I think it's a sweep. Part of a sweep. Right, exactly. Yeah, they're saying it's going to sweep it. Right. I don't see America. I mean, uh, I'd be a letdown, man. That'd be like this f***ing Super Bowl or some shit, You know, <laughs> like this. I'd be highly let down if American Hustle walked away with all of them. Right. Yeah, that would be a bummer, man. Especially for what else is up. You Especially know. since you're already expecting it to win. That's why I think it won't. Yeah, hopefully, you know. It's won everything else. I don't think it's worth sweeping anything. Well, I, I think I think the whole idea is just if you're Harvey Weinstein or a company, you build it up and say it's going to win, mm-hmm. and then everybody's going to want to see it and spend money on it. Oh, well, that's, that's tickets, what they've tickets, done, tickets, it seems mm-hmm. like. You know? <laughs> I did it illegally. I watched all these movies illegally, except for <laughs> except for uh, the next one, Blue Jasmine. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really shocked. The next one's Blue Jasmine. I'm really, really shocked that Blue Jasmine uh, did is is up for it. You know, right? It's Woody Allen for crying out loud, and, and that's <laughs> why it won't win. <laughs> yeah, so you think it won't win because he's got all this crazy. They they brought back his his allegations from his psychotic. An ex-wife. Right, he's all over the news for all this terrible stuff right now, you know. And it's just like it's Woody Allen, you know. He's been around forever. Why, why give, why give him it right, right after this terrible stuff happens? Wait the next couple of years, you give on to Woody Allen. I think it's just because he always gets snubbed. Does he always get snubbed? I wasn't aware of that. Woody Allen's never getting the Oscars. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, as far as writing goes, I again don't think this one was. I mean, it was too somber for me. It just was kind of depressing. Right. Um. It, there was nothing really new to it. I mean, it was a classic Woody Allen. I liked it, you know, but it wasn't. We're talking f-ing Oscars here, man. Right. <laughs> What's in, what do you got next? Empire Online said that uh, he's been op- he's been nominated twenty four times, and Kate Blanchett is in it. So those are two reasons why it might win. The next uh, the next one is Dallas Buyers Club. I liked that one. Yeah. I now I, I got my money on Dallas Buyers Club for possibly best picture. Best picture. Yeah. Best writing, though, best screenplay, I don't think so. I don't have my money on it for that. There's just something. It's, you know, there's. I don't know why, but I think it's because I'm just partial to the other film. Uh, Anybody? Em- Empire says there's not enough buzz around the script. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, look, I'm just, it's not, it's not f-ing wanking me off. Yeah, there's just, it doesn't have that star factor. Um, another one is her, Spike Jones. Her. her, I have my money on her. Yeah, that's the one that we're that we have our money on. Yeah, Charlie Kaufman, or not Charlie Kaufman. Well, pretty much Charlie Kaufman. Uh, yeah, Spike Jones. You know, like it's, I think it's time. I don't. Well, he did win one before, but this 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 movie said a lot about our society at this moment in time. You know, it's pretty relevant, and plus it was a good love story. And you know, I think everybody can relate to just being alone. Well, maybe not you, Christine, since you're married. But you know, just being, <laughs> f- you know, having something. I mean, honestly, I, I tell you, I would, I would probably date my phone if such <laughs> capabilities were there. I talk on the phone all the time. If I had a f- uh, really elevated uh, artificial intelligence like that, you know, I probably would. Yeah, it makes it really appealing. You know, it's not ridiculous. Yeah, it was a pretty believable story, and it's got that just enough sci-fi, just enough, just to, <clears throat> oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's not over the edge sci-fi. Yeah. Just to whack you off, <laughs> yeah. as you put it. Yeah, it just it made, it made me f-ing blow my load. I loved it. Um, they say why it won't win is because um, they usually don't do sci-fi scripts. Sci-fi scripts don't win. But the uh, the reason why it will win is because the only the last time a sci-fi script did win was another Spike Jones movie. Yeah, uh, Eternal Sunshine. Oh no, Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, that won ten years ago. I so, believe it. It's so, time. Yeah, it might be time again. <laughs> That's what we say at the Chris Briggs show. The next one is Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah, Nebraska. <laughs> this movie, man. <laughs> Tell the us scr- about this movie. The script was pretty basic. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't read these scripts, but I've seen all these films. And Nebraska just, it was a good idea. Um, I hate these movies. Like, I mean, black and white's fine, but I hate these movies that try and show mundane life and Try and just show the casualness yeah, and of things. That's what this was. Because they always, I mean, this one succeeded a little bit, but usually, usually they always fail. You cannot show boring <laughs> to get across the point of boring, <laughs> or you're going to have a boring <laughs> movie. And the first half of this movie, man, was really kind of 
distracting out just by because it was so slow. Yep, yeah, very you slow. Know? And I mean, there were some funny moments. You know, some of the some of the mundane stuff was hilarious. Yeah, you know, I liked it, but I I, I like the the study or whatever you call it, character study. I like how at the end, how the I don't want to ruin it, but this is not a spoiler. But I like it at <laughs> the end, how it just kind of shifts and this guy who's delusional is now getting the brunt of like a rich man you know like what would happen if you were rich and this guy who just really has no idea what's going on is just getting every <laughs> human emotion like you know like rabid wolverines just ripping them apart you know just right. for this money that he doesn't even have right and, that's the worst part but he's just he's delusional so now he's just got all sorts of levels it was i mean it was crazy it was it's very sad it was real sad uh, yeah th- what Empire Online said, it will win because it's a beautiful tale of old age, something that many of the aging Academy voters are all oh. too aware of and something that is of, often ignored. No, no. <laughs> I just think it's funny they took into account that they're the all old, so they might like it. <laughs> so they, I mean, who's on the Academy? Jennifer uh, Lawrence is on the Academy. James Franco. Like, what do you mean? Oh, who's, really? They're all old. Oh, I'm those, sure, those I'm sure a fair amount of them. Mm. Our old you Empire know. Online, man. What are you talking about? I don't know. Oh, no, don't. I don't. I can't promote Empire Online <laughs> anymore. <laughs> if we won't look at you as a source, was that anymore. all of them? That was all of them, I believe. We, that was, let's so, run through them again. Chris Brake Show has their money on her, or I do anyway. Yeah, then we were on her. How are we? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That was the Chris Brake Show discussing the Oscars. And thank you, Chris Break Show, for that awesome rundown of the best original screenplay uh, category. Uh, what do you guys think of the best original screenplay? Um, I I'm gonna have to agree with them. I think her is the one. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I think that'll probably be my pick as well. Although I will have to say that I, I got to give love to Nebraska. I love that movie. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it was mundane. Uh, depiction of, of mundane life or anything, but I, I would say that it was it was a really good, like they said, really good character study. So I, I'd have to give it credit there. Um, that'll be my uh, my dark horse pick, I guess. I'm kind of with them on the uh, on the American Hustle assessment, and I really hope it doesn't win a whole lot of Oscars. I don't know why it's nominated for this category at all. I don't, I don't feel like we got the screenplay in the movie. We got improvised dialogue left and right. Um, exactly. I have no idea why it's in, why it's in there. Um, real quick, let me say, I forgot to say this, Best Adapted Screenplay, the previous category, um, The Fifth Estate should have been nominated, in my opinion. A good script. Uh, and then for this category, I think The East should have been nominated. I love that script as well. Nice. So, but my pick is her for this category as well. Cool. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, the next, the next category is a big one. It's uh, best director. Right now, yep. for these, for this, we have David O. Russell for American Hustle, uh, Alfonso Cuarón for Gravity, Alexander Payne for Nebraska, Steve McQueen for Twelve Years a Slave, and Martin Scorsese for The Wolf of Wall Street. What do you guys think of best director? Try to keep your ad- adelades for uh, accolades for David O. Russell to a minimum. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny, I've been going first a couple t- uh, a lot recently. You go ahead. Sure. Um, again, American Hustle. No idea why it's even nominated. We've spoke about how he was just terrible at, at reigning in his actors on that movie. So no idea why he's even nominated. Um, how did this movie? infiltrate the oscars I how don't, did this it's, happen it is I, I would say it is 100 percent due to popular opinion people just love who's involved in the movie i guess people I guess. love david o russell people love uh you know all the actors mm-hmm. that's that's why it's in so um i'd love to see alfonso cuaron win an oscar at some points i he just it's just the wrong year <laughs> um because <laughs> steve mcqueen is just just was borderline perfect with uh, 12 Years a Slave. So I, I don't even have anything else to say. It's Steve McQueen, hands down. If he doesn't win it, I'm probably going to boycott the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree there. Steve McQueen deserves it all the way. Um, 
I'm I'm a huge fan of Gravity. I love Alfonso Cuarón's work on on Gravity. His long takes are just phenomenal. Um, his in in the way that he can get get our focus on one character at a time. That's one of the big things with with movies that I I love is when they have the focal point of being one or two characters in a scene without much else going on. Um, granted, we had the we had the backdrop of space and everything to kind of gaze upon, but when he gets that kind of strong performances out of his out of his performers, um, when it's just a single kind of kind of thing, that speaks well to to uh, speaks very highly to a director. But Steve McQueen just nailed every portion of Twelve Years a Slave, and really really made just one of the best movies I've ever seen. So I have to go with 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 Steve McQueen as well. Nice. I um, I'm torn here, and I'm and I'm actually gonna put a little to be continued here. I'm gonna tell you right now that I split my best picture and best director. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Twelve Years a Slave and Gravity, uh, Steve McQueen and Alfonso Cuarón, respectively. Uh, so I won't tell you which right now, but I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you when we do best picture. Okay, and, I'll, and I'll explain why if you guys don't mind. No, I like it. Right, cool. Okay. All right. Uh, our next category is best supporting actress, and uh, that uh, we have a clip from the Dento and the Robot podcast, which is uh, uh, well, we'll get into that after the after the clip. So here is Dento and the Robot talking about best supporting actress. Welcome to this week's episode of Dento and the Robot. I'm Dento. I'm the Robot. And I'm the Viking. And Jeddo, you have a special guest somewhere in the back end. Somewhere in the back end is Katie. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, so this week we're starting off the show a little bit different because we are going to discuss the Oscar nominations for uh, Matt's podcast, The Obsessive Viewer. Uh, and a quick disclaimer... I don't know about you guys, but I've not seen any of these movies. <laughs> uh, neither have I, apparently. Um, although I've heard good things about a couple of them. <clears throat> yeah, so we're discussing Best Actress Supporting Role, I believe. Yes, Best Supporting Actress. And our options are... Blue Jasmine, Jasmine, Sally Hawkins, haven't seen that. Jennifer mm-hmm. Lawrence in American Hustle, I've seen The Hunger Games. Uh... I Lupita Nyong'o, there's an apostrophe in there somewhere, 12 Years a Slave. Julia Roberts uh, in August, Osage County. And June you seen that one? What is that one? I don't even know the trailer for that. I haven't seen the trailer for that one. What's uh, that that's about? That's like a bunch of people in the South. Uh, Family issues. Yeah. The girl from Little Miss Sunshine is there. Oh. Cool. Although she's like 20 now, which is weird. <laughs> And Narrow Streep, I think, too. Yeah, a bunch of, like... I mean, it, it looks really boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's about like, divorce and mental illness. Fun times. Um, so the closest I've come to seeing any of these movies is Jennifer Lawrence in American Hustle. <laughs> um, I actually heard Blue Jasmine was a pretty good movie and that Sally Hawkins did pretty well in it. Hold on. Um, I'm going to look it up. Got a 7.5 on IMDb. Let's look at Sally Hawkins and Blue Jasmine. A New York She's socialite, deeply troubled and in denial, arrives in San Francisco to impose upon her sister. Maybe I'm thinking about a different movie, actually. Is Blue Jasmine <laughs> that's about the, uh, like she, oh yeah, I'm thinking, what's the one about where she fought, like the, like it's like, hmm. Use your words. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking about a different movie. <laughs> She's also in Her, which I saw this week. <laughs> and that was pretty good. Um, what's her face? Uh, Scarlett Johansson should have been nominated for Her. Yeah. No, it's just her voice. She, she really had quite the presence on screen, right? <laughs> I just like to imagine when they were filming that movie. She's like right behind the camera just yelling at everyone. Uh-huh. All right, so, Kevin, what do you think of the nominees? Sorry, what was the last one? June Squibb from Nebraska. Okay, I haven't seen any of these. 
Um, <laughs> not gonna pick Jennifer Lawrence because I'm mad at her for getting engaged. Uh, she's what? engaged. Yeah, I don't know if it was a joke or what. Some people said it's not true, but I mean, I saw the news that she got engaged to this little punk that she was in uh, one of the movies with. Let's see. My reason for voting her, not voting for her, would be. I don't know if you guys have kept up with it or if we've talked about it on the show. False. But, uh, um, but she she keeps going on about how, you know, like, she doesn't make fun of fat people. Like, she doesn't need to be a stick to be an actress. And she says, like, you know, it should be illegal to call someone fat on TV. And then when she was in American Hustle, uh, she talked about how she didn't get to kiss Batman. She was kissing Fat Man because Christian Bale gained a lot of weight for the role. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's her eliminated from my list. I'm going to go with Sally. Um, yeah. I want to go with Lupita Nyong'o, because she's got a pretty fun, like, pretty awesome name. <laughs> we should, 12 Years a Slave is supposed to be pretty good. I have no idea, other than maybe slavery. Well, yeah. Um, it was Sally Field, right? Uh, Sally Hawkins. <laughs> 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 Sally Fields, isn't that... That was, she was in last year's. Fields Cookies. <laughs> Yeah, let's go with Sally Hopkins. I still don't know who that is. She has really good eyesight. Like a hawk. Oh, Hawkins. Yes. I thought you said Hopkins. Oh. <laughs> no. Um, oh, she's cute. Yeah, let's go with her. I'm going to go Julia Roberts, because I feel like she is the most recognizable name on that list. So you're kind of just, like, rewarding, like, the rich with more money kind of thing then? like I, I support don't... the 1%. Okay. Fair. Entitled to your own opinion. <laughs> so yeah. how do we, uh, do we have to vote for all this, like, do we have to argue with each other to, for the same one, or are we just giving predictions? I think we're just giving predictions, or should we come up with one? Uh-huh. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch us how you buy the two. If it hollers, let it go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Sally Hawkins. Woo! Hawkins. Thank you, Dento and the Robot, for that breakdown of Best Supporting Actress. And if you, uh, if you're listening, uh, check out my review of Dento's, I guess, uh, Blaine Denton's book second thoughts on obsessivebooknerd.com and i would also like to announce that he gave me a copy of his next novel emergence a space opera uh, uh oh, cool uh book. that's awesome it sounds awesome uh, i'm gonna check it out uh, here soon and i'll have a review on obsessive book nerd about it uh, okay our so yes. our votes for best supporting actress on three one two three lupita j laws june squib <laughs> well shut up three different <laughs> ones i'm i I'm 100% serious about June Squibb. She did a phenomenal job in Nebraska. Uh, cool. She played just an incredible, like just like the characters. Just a just. She's a horrible person to to her husband, and it's it's played so well. And there's some really great moments. Uh, and I, I I love that movie, and I thought her performance was really good. So she's my pick. Tiny, you're kidding, right? No, I'm not. Um, I, I think I think I'm gonna go with her. Um, I think she was the best part of the movie. I think Jennifer she was good. Lawrence. I do, and I think uh, she's probably gonna win too because of popular opinion. Because everybody loves her. I love her. Yeah. Um, I, but I I, I would love to see Lupita Nyong'o win it though. I think she was phenomenal as well. Um, I think she she's probably the better choice, honestly, Lupita Nyong'o. But uh, uh, I'm gonna go with Jay Laws. I'm not really excited about this category, though. Um, I think it's kind of just not that exciting. I'm not excited about Best Actress either. I don't want to be sexist. Sexist. I know. I'm just not that excited for him. So <laughs> what about you, Mike? I, I mean, uh, Lupita is my pick. I also think she'll win. And I think Jennifer Lawrence was one of the worst parts about that movie. I'm oh. so over the Jennifer Lawrence thing. Really? I, I think she uh, she was cool at first because she was real. That's how my wife described her. But she's almost too real, and I didn't think she was doing all that much acting in American Hustle. I don't know that anybody was doing all that much acting in American Hustle, but <laughs> Christian I, think Bale she was. Was, I think she was doing – Christian Bale was pretty good. Yeah, if anybody in that movie deserves an award, it was Christian Bale. Yeah. Uh, I, thought, I thought Jennifer Lawrence was, was actually pretty, uh, pretty average. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. I can't disagree with any of that. <laughs> cool. I, I love her. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Our next clip is the the final clip we have of, of another podcast. Uh, I'm this, sorry to interrupt. Oh, I just ahead, thought sorry. of something. <laughs> I thought Jennifer Lawrence showed more depth in Catching Fire this mm. year huh. than she did in, in, the, in American Hustle. I don't know. I, I disagree with that. I disagree. All right, whatever. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, our next uh, our next category is best supporting actor, and it comes to us from the Everyday Destruction Show. So here we go. You are listening to the Everyday Destruction Show. Wow. Every day destruction Studios in Austin, Texas. This is the Everyday Destruction Show. And now, here's your host, Mike Destro. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Everyday Destruction Show. I'm Mike Destro. Hello, Rudy. Hey, what's Hello, up? Hello, Two Bills. Yo, yo. Hello, Kalo. Hey, Destro. And today, we're doing the nominees for Best Actor in a Supporting Role. Cool. So, how yep. many of you guys seen of all these movies? I've not seen one of them. I've seen one of them. Okay, so we're all coming from kind of different perspectives here. Some of us have seen some. Some just we just kind of know how this is going to go. I've seen a lot of commercials. Of them. Yeah, we've seen award shows in the. I saw a poster. Yeah. So we kind of know how these awards work. Not so much about the movie. So that's the angle we're kind of coming yeah. from here. And that's all you really need to know. We yeah. ignorant. All right, so let's go. <laughs> we some ignorant fools. Let's go through the actors. The first nominee, Barkhad Abi, Captain Phillips. Mm. I was just say, I think it's this generation's Cooper Gooding Jr. You think so? <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, he's way. coming out hard. And then he's going to go, <laughs> you, think, you think this is it? Yeah, this is I'm, it, man. He's peaking. I'm going to say just off his story, he has a really good chance, man. Yeah. He was a limo driver. He got this part. And now he's nominated for an Oscar. I think it's his year. I, yeah, I think. I mean, I think he's got a good chance, <laughs> man. Right. Just I mean, story-wise. Yeah. I heard that movie was pretty good, though. Way to go, Barkhead. Tom, Tom Hanks didn't get any. <laughs> Tom Hanks didn't get <laughs> It, man. All right, so he, we also have. He has enough. <laughs> yeah, he, he's got it. Uh, he's already done an AIDS movie. Good, good for him. <laughs> Move on. All right, so Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> Next nominee, we have Bradley Cooper, American Hustle. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean Bradley Cooper. Give him, give him an award. I don't know. No, you know nah, what? Bradley Cooper. In, in, the, in the words of John, good for him. Good for him. <laughs> I mean, he keeps he keeps working. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I'll, really tell, see. I'll tell you right now, he's not going to win. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll say I'll put money on it. He's not winning because yeah. he's a comedic actor. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's not going to win. He's not going to win. I did. I, I didn't even know. I like. <laughs> there's so many people in <laughs> American Hustle. Like, who's the supporting? How'd they choose who was supporting actor? Yeah. Right. Like they all seem to. Yeah. Who got paid the least? Yeah, this is Bradley Cooper. Bradley yeah. Cooper yeah. Supporting. All right. Then we have Michael. How do you say his last name? Fassbender. 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 Twelve Bender. years a slave. I think twelve <laughs> years a slave. Twelve years a slave. You I say think twelve days. Twelve days. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do that. Stand in my head. <laughs> I think twelve years a slave is going to clean house just because oh, yeah. everybody. It's. I heard it was really emotional. Yeah. It has all this acclaim coming around it, so they're going to clean house. And this, uh, he yeah. has a good shot. Think that'll be the big one. Category. Then? Yeah, that's going to be think, the big yeah, one. I think that's going to be the. The one. So this guy, he's probably at the top of the list right Is now. Michael, was Michael Fassbender popular before this? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I mean, he did something. I yeah. heard he had a big wiener. I don't, <laughs> oh! I don't know. He got that wiener. He got that goal. Well, if he doesn't win, then. <laughs> yeah, he's speaking got something of, to fall back on. Fall speaking forward. of wieners, we got Jonah Hill, the Wolf of Wall Street. Wiener. Yeah. I'd like Jonah Hill to win, but I don't think he's going to win. I think he's got a good chance in this in this lineup. I think it's going to be between him and uh, Barkett Abdi. Jonah yeah. Hill is America's sweetheart, dude. He's made yeah. the shift of, you know, doing comedy stuff into more serious stuff, which yeah. is pretty crazy. I heard, like, he didn't want to get sucked into that, so he turned down The Hangover. Oh, wow. Whoa. And he turned down Transformers. Uh, so uh, he could have yeah, made a lot of money off those, yeah, but that's not the way he was wanting to go. Plan. So I respect that, dude. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty awesome. awesome. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, he, uh, he's a good f***ing actor, dude. I think just yeah. the fact that he's, he's nominated, it's already winning for him. Yeah, yeah. But, he, I mean, Doing a movie with f***ing Leo is yeah, winning. Yeah, you know? but I, I don't think he'll get this. He one. definitely has a better shot than Cooper. But he deserves it. Yeah, yeah dude. I definitely think he's... I, think, I don't know what the <laughs> f*** I'm talking about. Next guy. <laughs> All right. That. And then we got Jared Leto in Dallas Buyers Club. So he plays like a transsexual, right? Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. So, I don't know. I heard a lot of people saying... He, just I, the fact that that role hasn't really been done in a big yeah, movie. So. I heard he rocked it, yeah. too. I, I heard he was really good in that. Cool. I think he has a good chance too, man. Yeah. Also, oh, final verdict: Who do we think is going to get this award? Jonah Hill. Ooh. You say Jonah Hill? I say Jonah Hill. Yeah. Two bills. Uh, I want Jared Leto, but I think Barker Dobby. I can see that. You really right. think? You really you think Barker Dobby's going to win? Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, those rich white people love black people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kayla, who do you think is going to win? I, 
I don't know, man. I'm kind of leaning toward Jared Leto now that we talked about yeah. it. Wait, is Michael Fassbender white? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, well, that, <laughs> yeah, that changes I'm going to say Jared Leto, just all the stuff around it and the role he did, I, th- I think he has it. Yeah. I'd like to see it. Yeah, all right, it. man. All right, so we are the Everyday Destruction Show, and this has been Best Actor in a Supporting Role at the 86th Academy Awards. Yeah. Cool. All right, so thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. See you on the red carpet. Thank you, Everyday Destruction Show, for your rundown of the Best Supporting Actor category. And I, I want to believe that they made a uh, an, an accepted reference in that clip, so I appreciate that when they mentioned uh, Jonah Hill and the Wiener. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so what did you guys think of Best Supporting Actor? Um, this one's a fun one. I like this one a lot. Yeah. This as long as Bradley Cooper doesn't get it, I think I'll be happy. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> That's funny because yeah, we, we're in complete agreement. This is my favorite category the, of this this particular Oscars. Um, yes, yeah. it's stacked. Uh, like I said, like Mike said, um, other than Bradley Cooper, I would be happy if anybody won. Um, mm-hmm. My favorite, my pick is Jared Leto. I think he's going to win as well. He's he's mm-hmm. the favorite, but Jonah Hill so great in that role. Michael Fassbender chilling, disturbing. And uh, Barkhad Abdi, just so much depth and, and just just a well-played role. Yep. I could say all the same. Jonah Hill is is like the one I'm rooting for just because. Um, yeah. But he's a, he's a total long shot. I'll, I'll totally understand if Jared Leto gets it. And like you said, I, I think he probably will. Mm-hmm. Um, Barkhad Abdi was fantastic in his first role. My pick is Michael Fassbender just for the cool. evil. Yes. <laughs> nice. Um, I haven't seen enough of these to make a knowledgeable uh, prediction, but uh, of the one that I've seen, I love Michael Fassbender. That's <laughs> the only one that I've seen. But uh, I do love that Jonah Hill's nominated. We've talked about this ad nauseum. But and I love that he took the role. He wanted the role so bad that he took like he took it for like I think like sixty thousand dollars. Um, something mm-hmm. like that. Like that's what he was paid for. So I just I love that that passion was there, but I assume that judging from hype, that Jared Leto, Leto will get it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So should cool. we move on to best actress? I think yep. so. All right. Well, best actress in a leading role is uh, Amy Adams for American Hustle, Kate Blanchett for Blue Jasmine, uh, Sandra Bullock for Gravity, Judy Dench for Philomena. In Meryl Streep for August Osage County. <laughs> what do you guys think of Best Actress? Go ahead, Mike. Um, I haven't seen August Osage County. I haven't seen Philomena yet, and I haven't seen Blue Jasmine. I know that Kate Blanchett is the front runner in that category, um, so I'm just gonna gonna say her because um, I didn't think Amy Adams was that great in American Hustle. And uh, I don't know that I don't know that Gravity would have failed without Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock was just fine, and I think she's a fantastic actress. Um, but she was not the star of Gravity. Hmm. Well said. I agree with that too. I feel like Sandra Bullock was a popular pick. Again, she's she's widely widely loved in the the Hollywood um, the Hollywood mm-hmm. zeitgeist. Um, and and so deservedly so. She's great. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And she's and she's a charming person too. I, I totally mm-hmm. get it. Um, I don't disagree with the nomination at all. Uh, but I don't I don't think she'll she'll win. She's not my pick. I again uh, just like Mike. I've only seen American Hustle and Gravity, so I, I don't have much to say. I'm going to go with Judy Dench. That's going to be my pick because. She's fantastic, and I, I've heard about what this film is about. Um, I haven't seen it, but uh, I've heard um, Steve Coogan talk about it. It sounds really, really, really good. I, I can't wait to see it. So I'm going to go with Judy Dench. Nice. Uh, I'll probably go with Judy Dench as well. That I, I've only seen Gravity and, and Sandra Bullock, but and I think the Sandra Bullock did a, did a good job. But I think Judy Dench will probably get it because, uh, uh, well, par- partially politics and and also. Um, I've heard she does a she does a great job. Um, cool. So yeah. Cool. All right. Moving on to best actor. We only got two categories left, guys. Uh, best actor: Christian Bale for American Hustle, Bruce Dern for Nebraska, Leonardo DiCaprio for The Wolf of Wall Street. Chiwetel, Chiwetel Ejiofor. Yes, Chiwetel Ejiofor. Right. Uh, 
for 12 Years a Slave, and Matthew McConaughey for Dallas Buyers Club. Uh, thoughts? Thoughts. thoughts. Um, lots of thoughts. Yeah, I love this category as well. Um, you know who I'm going to pick, Chiwetel Ejiofor. Um, but I, I wish so much that Dallas Buyers Club came out next year because <laughs> I would love to see Matty Mac win an Oscar for it because he was awesome. I, I really loved him in this. Um, he's putting out so much good work right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leo DiCaprio, I'd love to see him win a, win a, win a statue as well. But uh, I don't think The Wolf of Wall Street was quite his best. Uh, he was really good but I don't know if it was quite his best. Uh, Christian Bale was really, really good as well. He was the best best part of the movie, just about, other than uh, Jade Laws, because I love her. Um, anyways, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I have to go with Chiwetel Ejiofor. Just, I, I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about 12 Years a Slave. So, <laughs> yeah, Chiwetel Ejiofor is my pick. And the, the favorite, I think, I think he's going to win. Nice. I uh, I think actually Matthew McConaughey is the favorite, and I think it's kind of uh like because of his recent work. Yeah. Um, I think Dallas Buyers Club is kind of in the the public consciousness right now a little more than Twelve Years a Slave is because of you know True Detective and and some of the other things and it, Matthew it came McConaughey out, is up to. It came out more recently as well. Dallas. Buyers it, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I think that's the one. I would be okay with that. I also agree with Leonardo DiCaprio. I I would kind of like to see that one too. Um, but my pick is Chiwetel Ejiofor. I think McConaughey will win it. If I were given a statue, I would give it to Chiwetel Ejiofor. Yeah, my pick is going to be Chiwetel Ejiofor. Also, I, I, I finally I feel like I finally learned how to pronounce that name. Um, <laughs> even though I'm probably butchering it, um, just because his performance was just insanely great. Um, and insanely, like he emotes so well, um, and it, it, he he plays it he plays it so well, um, and it's a very complex character, um, yeah, I, I and I loved his performance, so I'll go with him, even though I haven't seen American Hustle, Wolf of Wall Street, or Dallas Buyers Club, um, but I also want to mention again, Bruce Dern, Nebraska. I love that movie, and I thought he did a fantastic job. And if they gave him a statue, kind of a, a kind of a surprise statue kind of thing, I wouldn't be upset, honestly. Um, so yeah, so that's my that's that's me. Uh, should we move on to the big one? Yes, let's do it. All right, best picture. Uh, we have American Hustle, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, uh, Gravity, Her. Nebraska, Philomena, 12 Years a Slave, and The Wolf of Wall Street. Now, Mike, you had an interesting thing with director and best picture. Do you want to go ahead and kick us off with uh, that? I'd love to. I gave uh, cinematography cinematography and film editing to Gravity, and I kind of went at length about why I I chose that. Uh, And for the same reasons i'm gonna go with alfonso coron for best director uh i think what he created as as a work of art um and entertainment was was the best i i think the direction in that movie was fantastic i know you say it's hard to give cinematography to something that is mostly uh computer generated but i i i think he created a lot out of very little. He took a very minimalist script and made an incredibly, incredibly exciting movie. And I've said this a couple times before, but I'll say it one more time. Gravity truly was a marvel to behold. It was one of the coolest experiences in a theater that I've ever had. As a work of directing, I, for me, clearly that is the winner. The best movie of the year is 12 Years a Slave. And, there's, and I don't think there's a question about that. Um, I I will honestly be shocked if 12 Years a Slave doesn't win Best Picture. It's the more important movie. Um, It's a movie that people will remember for a long time. In the future, we'll be talking about special effects in a different way than we talk about it now in terms of gravity. But we'll still be talking about uh, our American past. And and 12 Years a Slave is the best film version of that story. Um, And it's, it's my Best Picture of the Year. 
Well done. Yeah, well said. Thank I you. Agree. I love that. That was really personal. That was good. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, I obviously, you know, I'm picking 12 Years a Slave. Um, but to just kind of run through the list, American Hustle shouldn't be nominated. No idea why it's there. It's just popular no. for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Cap- Captain Phillips, um, a bit long, needed a little bit of editing, but still a great movie. Mm-hmm. Dallas Buyers Club will be my number two. I, that was fantastic. Blown away by it. <laughs> Gravity would be my number three. Um, Mike nailed it. Uh, Her would be my number four. Gra- I I would put it higher. I wish. I feel like this is a pretty stacked category this year. Uh, obviously, not all nine films would d- deserve to necessarily be there, but I think there's like four or five really good ones. Um, Nebraska, I haven't seen. Philomena, I haven't seen. And uh, I've already said Wolf of Wall Street was a bit long. Could have used some little, just a little bit of script work and editing. Um, not Marty's best, but but still really good. Um, Twelve Years a Slave might be the best movie I've ever seen. Borderline perfect um, for so many reasons. All the reasons I've stated before. I love it. Um, I think about it a lot. Uh, I will probably watch it many more times. And uh, I can't wait to see what everyone involved in it has to bring us next. So really excited for that. 12 Years a Slave. It's got to win. <laughs> nice. Um, I agree. I'll go with 12 Years a Slave for my pick because everything that we've said and will say in the future um, regarding it, I mean, it's just it's an incredible piece of filmmaking work and it's something that um, Steve McQueen is going to, I feel like he's going to parlay this success into just an astonishing career from from here on out um even more so than what what he's had before this um so i just think and and i don't think that there's a there's a director out there who has a more commanding um grasp of his craft than than steve mcqueen mcqueen right now and that was very evident in 12 years of slave Uh, So I'll go with 12 Years a Slave. Um, To comment further on the other nominees, I've I've been championing um, Nebraska quite a bit. I love the movie. Don't think it was it was worthy of Best Picture. Um, Hmm. Honestly, I I think that that nomination would be better served. Like I think if you could knock out Nebraska and American Hustle, and this is going to get some interesting responses out of you guys, but. And replace them with Out of the Furnace and maybe Prisoners. I think it would be a better a better representation of the year in, in movies for me. One hundred percent agree. Um, thank you. I would I wouldn't say Out of the Furnace, but I was actually going to go there next. Um, mm. What what got snubbed and Prisoners? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, but having the nominees that we have now, uh, her is great. I, I love it. I won't be upset if. Well, I mean. I mean, I know Twelve Years a Slave is going to get it. It's it's got to. It has to. But um, I'm looking at Entertainment Weekly, and they actually have Gravity, really, as the favorite. Yep. Huh. huh. See, if if Gravity wins, I I don't know how I'll react because I love the movie so much. Best Picture worthy over Twelve Years a Slave, absolutely not. But Best Picture worthy in and of itself. I don't think so. I I love the movie. It was visually just astonishing, but. In terms of substance for me, there wasn't much under the surface of, of what was pretty much thrown in our face. I mean, that's as yeah. lightly as I can as I can put it. Um, yeah, very good. Yeah. It was – I mean, I love the movie. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to buy the Blu-ray as, as – like now. But <laughs> it's, it's not a movie that I would, I would want representing the entire year of films. I, I love what Mike said about importance. I feel like the most important film is Twelve Years a Slave. I, I mean, Easily. I really do. Yeah. You know, yeah. twenty years from now, what what are people going to be talking about? I feel like I hope we're all going to be forgotten about American Hustle. I hope we'll just forget about it. But <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think Gravity could be in that conversation. Absolutely. Uh, maybe yeah. her. I don't know. But Twelve Years a Slave is the clear answer. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In terms of importance to, to, to society and things like that, absolutely. But I think that the other movies, some of them, they, they, speak, they speak highly about, about some things. Or they, I, they speak I think, well. I think importance to film, actually. Oh, Years importance to film. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just, just in, in this, when you mention good films, I, I'm going to mention 12 Years a Slave from now on. Okay. I'm thinking of like social commentary and, and like depiction of, of like a, a good um, importance of – 
what's the word I'm looking for? Like importance in timeliness. Terms of, timeliness. Yeah, yeah. Timeliness. Which uh, we know the academy doesn't give a shit about because uh, <laughs> <laughs> the social network didn't win in 2010. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. But if we're looking at timeliness, I mean. Her has some social commentary, but it is very much a love story. So I can see why that wouldn't win in terms of that in that uh, criteria. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I I can get on board with that. I under from what I understand, Dallas Buyers Club would would kind of fall into that. I would assume. Yeah, um, and Philomena, from what I've heard as well, because I think that makes some some interesting um, comments, if you will, or or statements about. You know the the systemic nature of religion and how it how it affects people in the real world and, and how how um, anti women it is how misogynistic it is. Um, so that's that's something inter- that's obviously something I'm interested in given given the podcast I just launched. Um, the secular perspective dot com. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that's another one that I think is also important, even though I haven't seen it, I can't can't speak to it totally. But uh, it, like I said great category this year i I feel like there's there's five four or five great ones that could absolutely win and i I wouldn't be that upset so yeah yeah yep cool so we got 12 years of slave across the board correct yep yes sir all right well um we're getting a little long here but uh, did you guys want to talk about snubs or anything like that prisoners prisoners yeah Mm -hmm. prisoners out of the Furnace for me, I love that movie so much. I know that it, it didn't get quite the play that uh, it or I was expecting, um, judging from the trailers. But once I saw it, I thought it was a, just a fascinating character study and just really well done um, in that respect. So uh, I was hoping for it, but it didn't really work out. But I still love the movie uh, and urge people to check it out. Nice. Uh, I would also say we've, we've kind of talked a lot about Fruitvale Station. And uh, I, I, I'm going to stick by a lot of what I said, a lot of my praise for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it would be hard to argue against a nomination for Michael B. Jordan in that movie. I think he got snubbed a little bit. Yeah, absolutely he, agree. The the one, even just just the for the one scene of him of him in jail uh, with his mom yeah. visiting, that alone yeah. was like it's fantastic. Like, yeah, he's yeah. gonna he's gonna get he's gonna. But get, he's super young. Yeah, right. absolutely. He's got his whole career ahead of him. I mean, who knows? There's time. He could mm-hmm. get he could get an award for being the Human Torch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mentioned earlier uh, the Fifth Estate for uh, screenplay, mm-hmm. and um, I'd also put uh, Prisoners as, again, like you guys said. I think in a couple of categories would have been good. Uh, I think Trance for uh, screenplay as well. Yeah, um, probably even Best Picture in my opinion. Oh, it, wow. it made my top ten. Interesting. Um, I think trans should have been in a couple of categories. So, uh, and then lastly, I feel like uh, the film Rush was overlooked entirely in pretty much any category. Oh um, yeah. Not, I don't, yeah, you're not, not the only one to say that. Yeah, I, th- I think I think screenplay especially. Um, I'm, I'm screenplay <laughs> happy this year. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that that one too. Nice. I haven't seen tra- or I haven't seen Rush, but from what I understand, I really need to. Um, it's fun. It's a really yeah. good, really touching movie. Nice. Uh, I would have thrown trance into editing, probably. Oh, that's, yeah, that's another good category for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, totally. And I'm I, and I'm a huge Danny Boyle fan. Um, yep. So I'm, I'm, you know. Yeah, I would have put Danny Boyle movie. for director over David O. Russell. Kick him out. <laughs> right. But yeah. Oh, Jesus. Nice. <laughs> so clearly, our least favorite movie of the year was American Hustle. <laughs> uh, least favorite movie as far as this Academy yeah, Awards. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I'm, right. I'm kidding. There were much worse <laughs> movies. Yeah. Yep. One more snub I kind of want to mention was uh, I'm kind of surprised, and a couple people have mentioned this. James Gandolfini for Enough said. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're really big on doing those posthumous things, yeah. and I watched Enough said over the weekend, and he was really quite fantastic in it. Um, I, my overwhelming feeling at the end of the movie was that I wish there was more of this type of character in his body of work rather than Tony Soprano. Not that Tony Soprano is bad. It just it would have been interesting to see him do a little more lighthearted fare um, like Enough Said. Enough Said was great. I, I, think, okay. I think he could be in there. It was a tight race, best actor or best supporting actor, depending on how that goes. But uh, I, I, think, I think he could have been in there. 
I, I agree. Yeah, I like the movie as well and his performance. Huh. Gonna miss him a lot. Yeah. 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 Huh. I haven't seen it, but maybe they just thought that enough was said. I'm so sorry. God. Hey. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, I'll have to check that out. Do it. Uh, all right, cool. Well, uh, I guess that about does it for us over here at the Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Um, I would like to th- personally thank everyone that submitted their, their clips. Intermission Podcast, Poor Man's Process, The Nerds You're Looking For, Movie Buzzed, The Chris Break Show, Dento and the Robot, and The Everyday Destruction Show. You guys did a great job, and I'm really happy to have you guys on. Um, yeah, uh, thank you, uh, and thank you to all, all of our listeners for for listening to us break down the Oscars for you. Um, as always, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, like and uh, like us on Facebook, um, rate us and review us on iTunes, please. Um, and then also check us out on podcastland.com. You can find us on Twitter, at Obsessive Viewer, at Obsessive Tiny, and at I am Mike White, respectively. Um, and you can contact us via email at ovpodcast at gmail.com where you can send us anything you want, any suggestions for movies you want us to review, shows you want us to watch, things you want us to comment on, uh, audio files you want us to play of your own reviews. Um, we love hearing anything from you guys, uh, and, and we really appreciate all the feedback you give us. Um, oh, and thank you to Star Tissue for our theme music. Um, that about does it for us. Uh, I guess that, that's about it. Anything else, guys? I should do it. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Music. Music made by Star Tissue. (laughs) I'm not going to put that in the episode. (laughs) That was loud. It was was loud. Sounded like your nephew. I think we've got our tag. Oh, no. (laughs) Um, (laughs) 